with the series for the past couple of weeks, and this started with Apostle's Heart from, a, from the Heart of the Pastor with All In. And then with Pastor Vince, he reiterated the all in and with Elder Rhonda, we began to talk about what are some of the obstacles along that along the way that stop us from being all in. So for today's sermon, I wanted to take a look at for us to be all in. What are we about to quit? So. When we look back at all in for 2019, for what we're declaring and decreeing, we start with 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Yes. Now, y'all know I love definitions. So being all in means for us to commit to something, right? Right. To commit means to, is defined as to carry into action deliberately. Then I dig a little deeper in the definition to figure out what does delivery deliberately mean. It means having full awareness of what one is doing. So with this understanding, we have to come realize, we have to realize that the action that we are often carrying out. So what we're declaring to be all in, to be committed, that we are to carry an action with full awareness of what we're doing, amen, to be all in. But the challenge is often one of the things that we do, an action that we do, and we don't know deliberately what we're doing is quitting. Before I go any further, let me back up and say, when I talk about quitting, I have to set the stage that quitting isn't necessarily a bad thing. That's right. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, God even says, for everything there is a season, a time for every action under heaven. When God declared that everything has a season, he already shared that there's going to be a time and a place when things have to quit. Mm -hmm. To quit means to leave a place or stop doing with the intention of it being permanent. The, so once you quit something, I don't know anybody else, if you, once you get ready to quit that job, you quit. Like, I'm not coming back here again. Like, this is over. Like, there are people who will sing their way out the door. They will tap dance and shuffle because they have no intention. Yes. This is going to be a permanent thing that when I say I quit, people get all extra with their voice. Like, I, like they practice how they're going to say I quit. <laughs> Because it's permanent, you're not coming back. <laughs> but the danger, though, with quitting is that often it's led by comfort, fear, or logic. So if quitting is changing of a season, we let comfort, fear, or logic dictate our season. In doing so, we go down the path where we quit things. We quit, the, we quit the wrong things at the wrong time. Or, I don't know if I'm the only one who has heard apostles say this, don't make a permanent decision on a temporary emotion. Yeah. It could just be me, could just be me. <laughs> but if we are, take a moment to be honest with ourselves, as I mentioned the job though, in our minds, I don't know if anyone has this fictitious world that you think of, where you've quit a lot of stuff. You have quit your workout plan. You have quit your diet. You have quit jobs. You have quit your budget. Some people have even quit friends. <laughs> in this fictitious world that we live in, even the best dream of all, I don't know if ever, I have this every now and again. I dream that I don't care anymore. <laughs> like I just quit caring. That is, that's the dream. That's like, ooh, what if I just don't care? I don't care how I look. I don't care how, I'm, I'm just going to walk in any kind of way. I don't care. And then reality comes back in. Right. <laughs> and you realize that that healthy, long life or that vacation body does not come by quitting. Right. <laughs> Those bills, is, is sometimes job can be a little special, but the bills still come and they don't care if you quit, like for real or for fake. They still want theirs, right? And then budgets, 
oh, we don't like those. I want to quit them every time. But we have to be good stewards over what we have because the retirement plans, the college funds, vacation budgets, and new outfits do not come on their own. <laughs> the funny part is when we look at quitting, we have to understand the lie of the enemy. And the fact is that he states that or tries to tell us that quitting would make life so much easier. When you're in the middle of something difficult, that little voice that says, you know, you can just quit. I have, I don't know about anybody else's work, I have my quitting support group. That's when I go off into the room in the middle of the day and I make a phone call like I'm about to quit. <laughs> I just left the meeting and if they say that one more time. And my support group reminds me that daycare is not for free. Right. <laughs> that I do pay my tithes. Housing is nice, yep. is it's really nice. But it's that moment when you get into that emotion where you, the words I quit rise up in your tongue and just want to leap off. Because in your mind it thinks, the enemy has you thinking that it would be so much easier if I just say these words. But the truth is, it's real easy to quit stuff you don't like. But quitting is really hard when it's something you do like. But going back to the topic of all in. All in goes back to the idea of the whole amount. Understanding that it's not a portion, a part, but all of it. If you look at James 1, 2 through 8. I love this scripture when it says, "My bre starting at verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And all, and any you of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, as we learned last week. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the winds. For let them not let that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So the challenge that we have with quitting is that not only do we know what we think will happen, it's also how we begin to define that all. So here's the thing, if I'm going to be all in something, that means I can't be partial somewhere else. That's right. So that's where quitting can have either a positive or a negative connotation. Because in order to be all in on something, something has to go, amen? So the challenge that we often face is how we define our all and how we even connect with God and how quitting plays a role in that. Forgive me in my post-it notes. Now, as a side note, because I know I had to defend my Starburst from some people before church. <laughs> there are multiples of you. <laughs> There were multiple. They don't think it was just, it wasn't just one. No, no. Mm -mm. There was many who on the way over I saw, they were like, ooh, what's them for? <laughs> can, I, can I just, can I get just one? Did you count them? I, I, I didn't count them, so. Pretty much. <laughs> so what happens is when we start talking about quitting, or even our commitments is I have these jars, and there should be about, the same amount of starbursts in each one. But the way that we do is that we enter into relationships or jobs, and we're thinking in our mind that everything should be equally distributed, correct? But the problem happens is that when something gets overloaded, we start to shift. So health isn't doing so well, so you know what, I'm not gonna take those classes right now. Um, my family is getting stressed out, so I'm gonna take a few hours off of work. So every time I'm moving a starburst, 
I'm quitting something in that area. Yeah. So we're taking from one area to another area. Now, what's even more interesting is um, I really need to be there for my friends. They really need me. This is the scary one. Jesus. When we steal, when we quit parts of the kingdom, because we need to help our friends. Or again, my health. Or you know what? We'll even put our health on the line because we need to work a few more hours. So all we continue to do was bounce back and forth. And we quit areas in each one of these because we think at some point they're supposed to be equal. And we'll keep moving and moving and so health starts to go down because we got work and then we got family and then we got friends and then I'm going back to school. So that goes down, but oh, I'm not feeling good. I have a headache. My, my blood pressure is up, my sugar is up, everything that ain't supposed to be up is up. So what I'm gonna do now is I can't stay up with God. I can't make it to prayer. I just, I, you know what, it's just so much going on. And you know what, I only have my kids for a few years, so I'm gonna go back over here to family. And you know, I'm not gonna get that promotion unless I go back to school. And so we keep shuffling them. So when we begin to think about quitting and moving, what the sad part is we don't have the mentality and it's hard because we're shifting. There's the deliverance that we had and it was amazing. We have the breaker anointing for those things to fall off of us, but the true deliverance is when our mind begins to shift. That's right. That's right. And the challenge that we have is that what God has already told us is that what all we have to do is if we put everything in here, we don't have to worry about all that other stuff. We don't have to quit anything. The kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and everything will be added unto it. So if we already have everything in the jar, the jar is big enough, the kingdom is big enough to take on everything else that we were trying to juggle around. So as we are in this season and we're going all in, as we are going all in, when we begin to notice that once we focus in on God, he will balance the rest of it out for us. I don't know about anybody else, but when I, the season that I am in, that my family is in, there's those moments where you start pulling from one place to another. And you just want to make it through. But the catch is that you can't quit because you're so far in. You can't stop. You've already traveled this far. You already have the jar on the table and it's labeled. And you feel like, okay, so now what? How do I feel this? How do I balance this out with everything else that's there? And the interesting part is, so we try to do it. It's funny, there's a, when we look at, back at when God even says, for we know in part and prophesy in part. We know in part, but we try to fill up the whole picture. Right. And we don't let God be God and let the kingdom guide us where we're going. So when I look back at quitting, and us going all in. And the initial question is, what are we about to quit? It puts things, and I wanted to do the starburst because it puts it in perspective of what are we about to quit? Because if we're going to be all in, we have to quit something. And the first things that come to mind is, I don't wanna quit school or my family, but the thing is, if we quit worrying about those, everything else will happen. I love that as I was going through this, God showed me a redefinition of quit. Now y'all know I love my acronyms, right? <laughs> quiet until it's time. To be quiet is marked by little to no motion or activity. Quit implies that we are ready to move, but the fact of the matter is it's a time more than, more than any that we have to stay still. As I mentioned, I have my support group of I want to quit because work was special. There was, ooh, gee, we just now seeing the promised land. <laughs> 
But those are the moments where we wanted to, I wanted to move. I wanted to do something. I needed to change something. And God says, stop, just wait. If we look at Psalms 46 and 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Know that I am God, not you, not your boss, not mid-American, not Wells Fargo. I am God. Amen. Until means up until that time that has been ordained. In Luke 19, 13, Jesus tells the disciples that, and he called his 10 servants and delivered to them um, unto them. And he says, occupy until I come. So he specifically says to occupy. So he knows that there is a time that comes, but he will tell us when that time is to move. It's being appointed and but in James 1 and 4, it says, but let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The challenge is if we quit too soon or we quit at the wrong time or we quit the wrong thing, it's never fully completed. It's interesting. We, um, with health, I always wonder I have family members, my mom was one of them. For her to quit smoking, it took a triple bypass and a heart attack to stop. And I think back, is there a perfect time where she could have stopped and had no repercussions, no effects? Because sometimes God says quit and we just blow straight through that like it's a stop sign and we're going 40, like God is like stop. But we still push the limits or sometimes we stop too soon. And with that, there are consequences that come, but it's never fully complete. Amen? And then time, the measure period during which an action process or condition must exist. And this takes us back to everything is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. The challenge is when we quit, we want to take things into our own hands. We want to change something. We want to move it. We want to shift it. And we don't know what's coming up ahead. I was laughing as I was doing this because this week, our wonderful little twin boys, um, toddlers don't know how to quit. They are motivated, like they don't know stop. And when they do stop, they're the extreme of stop. I was like, stop. I didn't say stop doing everything. I didn't say stop putting your shoes on. I just said stop hitting your brother. So when I said stop or to quit, I meant quit doing the action that was causing issues. And a toddler mind quit means play statue game. That's not what it meant. <laughs> or quit is not just me making a noise for my own benefit and health. It's a word that is coming out of my mouth that has directions that means stop doing what you're doing. And I have one that's like this, quit doing this. This right here, quit. Like you don't want me to do this anymore. This is, this is, with this, so I can do it with this finger, right? I can put, no, that. <laughs> Y'all know exactly who that is. Um, but with God, we do the same thing. God says, okay, don't do this part. And we just stop everything. God says, don't take that position. I didn't say leave the company, give you a two weeks notice, move to another state. I just said that position right there is not where you're supposed to go. We are like, Lord said, go to California. That is not what he said. He just said, whatever that position level four was not supposed to be you. (laughs) Or God says, move forward. And we don't get the last part of the directions. We just off. He called me to be that. I'm like, whoa, hold on, wait. Um, Not today. Not like right now. Like just hold on a second. Like just... Let's get to Friday, and then we'll see what comes next. Like, they spoke a word, and I'm like, you didn't get the rest of the word. It just, they said over the course of time, over the next seven years, it just, you just were gone. But that's the thing is when we say quit, it is a good thing and a bad thing. And so us understanding what that means. And when we say, when God is asking for us to be all in, asking us to be committed, we have to let go of everything else and trust that what we are holding on to 
is all that we need. In Mark 8, 34 through 38. Sorry, I'm looking because that wasn't in my notes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mark 8, 34 through 38. Jesus says, when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desire, desires to come to me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whomever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes to the glory of his Father with the glory of angels. So as we are in this season of all in, I just bring back the question of as in order to be all in, what are we about to quit? Amen? Amen. Amen. So at this time, um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, dear God. God, we are humbled because you call the church your bride, Heavenly Father, to be committed and all in. I even think to the point of vows where it says forsaking all others. God, but let us understand that when we say the word to quit, it can mean a commitment, but God, it's also direction. We thank you and we praise you for today as you have led us through, even from their songs, Heavenly Father, to the offering, dear God, how you have rested your presence upon us, Heavenly Father, and let us know that we are indeed free at God and directing our path to be all in and all in with you God you say I am I am whatever you need I am bigger I am I can, I'm bigger than any issue any problem any worry Heavenly Father Thank you, Jesus. that we no longer have to make we don't make the decisions of what to do and what not to do God we leave it all to you and you will direct our path so, God, we thank you and we praise you today for showing us, for the revelation of what we can let go so that we can let you be God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.